It's been the biggest talking point in both codes over the past week. Joseph Suali'i heading to Rugby Union. Seems you've just come back from uh, your role in England rugby alongside Eddie Jones. We'll obviously talk about the Eddie influence shortly. But the appeal for a player, obviously there's the cash component and the opportunity percentage-wise. I mean, what's he, what's he weighed up here to make this call, do you believe? I think he's probably weighed up what the next couple of years brings for rugby in Australia. I think there's a British and Irish Lions tour in 2025. And obviously hosting a World Cup, um, you know, having someone like Joseph in, um, you know, the Wallabies team brings a high profile to, um, you know, that particular team. There's probably not a, a whole heap of, um, you know, household names from the Wallabies here in Australia. The interesting thing, like having experienced international rugby overseas, like in Europe, it is enormous. Like uh, with England, we were getting 82,000 every single week. And... Um, across France, all and those types of countries, it, it's, a, it's a really big sport. So I think they, you know, get Joseph in to add some profile to the uh, to the game here in Australia. Seems so with uh, a high price tag comes pressure and expectation. How would the the rugby union blokes accept him? Like they, I don't know how many of them would be on 1.6 million dollars a year. Uh, he's obviously going to come over and have some big expectations on his shoulders. How will they take to him? It's going to be a really interesting one because he's going to have to earn his stripe skill. I think uh, when we saw Sam Bird just go across to England uh, in 2015, you know, after winning a premiership for the Rabbitohs, it took him a little while to get accepted by the playing group. And I think, um, you know, for Joseph, he's going to have to go there and he's going to have to earn his spot in the team. Now, obviously, they expect him to make the Wallabies, but he needs to earn that. The game's not as easy as what people think. It's, um, you know, it, it's a game that is a contest at every single ruck. And so it does take some transition and time for, for players. But I think if someone can uh, have a successful transition, Joseph, because he's played as a school kid, but also Eddie Jones, Gelt, I think, you know, he's, uh, he's had success uh, with players crossing codes in Wendell Saylor, Matt Rogers, Lottie Takiri, and took Australia to a World Cup with those three guys back in uh, 2003. There's been comparisons made with perhaps that he might take a similar path, Gus, to what Sonny Bill Williams has done, seizing opportunities and whatever code suited what he wanted to do. Is, is that the path you expect of Joseph Suli here? And is it the right one? No, I've said it on this show ever since he came to Rugby League that eventually the day would come where Rugby League wouldn't hold him. The game wouldn't be big enough for him or the pay packet that he could command if he went to other sports, and particularly with the rugby on the international stage. It was... For me, I could never see him play him rugby, rugby League against the Roosters. Once he'd gone there and got into that environment, mm -hmm. I could never see him leaving that club to go to another NRL club. No one would ever have the money to entice him or, um, or you know, leaving the Roosters is a big decision to make. But for me, the best option was another, was another code. He's got the right management for that because that's what they do. They get the most money that they possibly can. And he was always going to go to rugby. On the other side of that, Eddie Jones, who's now the Wallabies coach for Australia, he's always been of the belief, always. And this goes back 25 years when I used to talk to him when he was playing, he was coaching super rugby here in Australia. If the Australian senior teams, the Super Rugby teams or the, or the Wallabies want someone who's ready to play international class rugby against other nations in that environment, the development system here in Australia is just not good enough to promote kids out of club football into that environment. He said, you've got to go and get rugby players. And so Wendy, Wendell Saylor, Lottie Dakiri, Young Rogers, um, Andrew Walker and all that, the, he was recruiting around that time as well because he said, I can't just get someone out of the pathways in rugby. The pathways aren't strong enough. He still holds that belief. So I interviewed him for Stan during the off-season and I said, you're still going to be looking at rugby players? He said, absolutely. He said, I've got it if I, I want to improve our side. So you're under the impression there'll be more? You'll be after more then? 100%. If he, if he wants to compete... Well, he nominated Cameron Murray. Yeah. He said Cameron Murray would look good in rugby. What, what about Do you agree, Steve? I mean, you've coached Murray. Did oh, yeah. Cameron Murray would be an outstanding rugby player. You play him as a number 12 and... Um, it's not unlike... What position is that? It's not unlike an edge back rower. So it's inside oh, centre. Yeah. Technically inside centre. Um, so like How many on the field do you have? <laughs> oh, plenty of them. You're yeah, good, guys. Exactly. You are good. But he would be very good. He obviously played at Newington as a school kid. Uh, he captained the, the Newington um, college team to a, a GPS premiership. So he's got experience there. But he'd be outstanding player. And knowing Eddie like you do too, do you think he does have a hit list? Oh, I've got no doubt that he would have a hit list. Yeah, he would. What about this talk around origin? Freddie was asked on the weekend whether or not he should still play. Do you have a view on that, Gus, whether the, the game should not pick him in origin if he's, if he's decided to leave the sport? Too hard. I, I wouldn't pick him, but I can understand the attraction of having him in the side. He's playing rugby league at the moment. He probably should be eligible. But for me, he's gone. 
Uh, he's gone to rugby, he's made his decision. I'm happy for him to go now. Is there a circumstances element to that too, Gus, where you know, if it's game three, it's a decider and you've lost a couple of stars? Oh, I don't care. No, no, no that, does, that, doesn't, that doesn't come in. He's made his decision. He's made his decision to go to rugby. Go. Yeah, but that, that's how I'll, I'll go now. I'm, 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 I'm of the belief if, he, if he's good enough, he should be there. If he's, I'm not even saying he's. I don't even think he is, to be honest. But if he's good enough... He, he should be in the side. He's, he's involved in rugby league this year. He's playing in the NRL this season. If he's good enough, he should be able to play for New South Wales. But, look, is he going to be there? So and I, I think that's the I'm way Fittler sure. will go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the way yeah, Fittler will yeah, go. I don't even know if he's good enough to be there this year. But, yeah. I mean, if he is, I think he should be eligible. If you're coaching, just a quick one here, Seems, if you're coaching Joseph Swalili right now and you know at the end of next year he's leaving the rugby, would you rather him go now or are you comfortable doing two seasons with him? Oh, I think um, I'd be comfortable having him for two seasons. I think I've seen it before, you know, when I was at South Sydney, Angus Crichton had signed um, you know, a year out to go to the Roosters and you know, players these days, it's, it's quite common, isn't it? So, you know, it's not ideal, but it's quite common. Didn't the NRL say when there's all that talk around Val Holmes and um, all the players going to trial with NFLs that they wouldn't allow this anymore, that if someone was to go, they'd have to leave? Isn't that, wasn't that the talk? I, don't know, I remember, I remember there was even talk that they were going to create a little kitty that if they wanted to keep someone, they could tip them, tip money in to keep them. Oh, that's, the old war chest. That's, that's ridiculous. Like, all of a sudden, every manager going into a renegotiation will bring up rugby union. Every time, he scores, every time he scores a try, and I think he does in our game, people are going to refer to the fact that he's going to rugby. Why do we need that? So you're saying go he should now. go now? Go now. You well, made your decision. Well, the, go game, now. the game should get rid of him now. Yeah. Go now. Really? Go now. I don't, I don't know how Nick would feel about it. Don't that. let the door hit you on the ass on the way out. See you later. <laughs> Gone. That's harsh. Oh, you know what? Well, but that's he's made his decision. Yeah, he's made his decision, but yeah. he's still an NRL contract to play. You can't just tear up a contract and get rid of him. All right, well, I'm just saying. There you go. That's what Gus wants. He I signed a contract for a rugby 18 months before his rugby league contract ends. Nice. It's can't do the, can't, he can't sign with any other rugby league club, club in that club. time. He can only yeah, sign with months, rugby. Yeah. He's yeah. made his decision. I've got nothing against the kid. I've loved having him. He, he's a tremendous athlete. He's great for the game. But he's decided to be a rugby player. Bye-bye. So if it was at your club, you'd, you you'd move him out the door. You'd say, just go. I wouldn't do anything to hold him, no. Stay with us. This would you is 100% hey, Would you, you pick him in the side? If I had to. Well, I'm not oh. pick, I don't pick the teams. No, but, but, but I'm just saying, as a code, I'm happy for him to go now. Go now. This is 100% for yeah. you. Go now. Let's <laughs> still go. You hear that, Joe?